This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? We're back on our final uh, configuration for the 555 timer. And as you can tell by our rapidly blinking light, um, we're doing the A-stable multivibrator mode of the 555 timer, which is basically, it's just a free-running oscillator with the frequency of oscillation controlled by this timing capacitor here and these two resistors here. We have one resistor for the charge and one resistor for the discharge. So if these two resistors are the same value, this is going to sound weird. You can't get a 50% uh, duty cycle. Let me show you. Okay, here we are. This is uh, about 12, 12 hertz of rate of oscillation. So now if we come over here and take a look at the oscilloscope, you can see we're 11.5, 11.49 is kind of kind of floating there a little bit. But if you look at your duty cycle, you can see that our space, the off, is about twice as much as our mark, which is the on. So what that happens there is when you do the 555 timer in this configuration with equal value resistors, you get about a two-thirds to one-third um, mark to space ratio. Standard, it's the way it is. If you want to do it differently, all you have to do is change the value of one of these resistors. I'm keeping them the same, you know, just for our educational purposes today to keep everything simple. So now let me show you how to build this circuit and explain to you why it works. Okay, I'll put a circuit diagram right up there that you guys can take a look at what we're doing. So here's our 555 timer. There is our little space, the little notch right there that signifies that that is pin one. If you can't find the space or the dot or whatever, just look at the text. And then, you know, the text should be up, up right, red, left to right, like we do here in the United States. So that's how you put it in. All right, pin eight. We start down here. This is pin one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pin eight is our power goes to VCC. Pin one goes to ground. So that's your power. Do those first. All right. So next, let's put in our timing capacitor. In this case, we're going to use a 220 microfarad timing capacitor. And we're going to put the anode in pin 2. And the cathode, I'm going to put to pin 1. Now, your diagram shows it going to ground. Well, it is going to ground. Going to ground right there because there's ground. And remember, when you're working with the breadboard, everything in these vertical rows is in parallel. So that's going to ground. It just makes things a little bit neater. So that's our timing capacitor. Now we have to charge our timing capacitor and discharge it. So we're going to start with the discharge, which goes to pin 7. I'm using 100 ohm resistors. So from VCC to pin 7, that is our discharge. Now, our charge comes through the threshold pin. Remember, when the threshold pin reaches well, goes above two thirds VCC, then the signal is going to switch off. So we are going to go from pin seven to pin six. We're just going to connect them together. Just like that. Now we have our charge, our discharge, and our timing capacitor. So next, we need to connect the threshold to the trigger. That is pin 6 and pin 2. I'm just going to take a little, little jumper wire here. I'm going to have to hang on, move these down so I have room here. So pin two 
to pin 6. If you do not do this, pin 2 to pin 6, you will not get a free running oscillator. This connection right here is what refreshes or reloads or sends it into the next cycle, however you want to call it. That pin right there. Now the next one is also quite important. That's pin 4. Our reset pin has to be held high. So you can go from 4 to VCC or you can just go from 4 to 8. I think it keeps it neater. We're almost done. So now what we need is our output. That's pin 3. So from our output, I'm just going to run a jumper over here so I can get the output away from the circuit. Like so. We're going to put the anode of a uh, 5 millimeter LED there. 330 ohm resistor to ground. And that is where I usually stop. The control voltage on pin 5 is recommended in the data sheet. Do, do, it, do what it says. Yeah, so put your little, uh, what is it, 10 nanofarad capacitor to ground from there. Just like that. I, I rarely do that. It doesn't cause a problem. But, you know, if you want to be safe, don't do that. All right. So, next up we can add power and energize the circuit. And there it is. Let's hook up um, our oscilloscope probes. Ground, always hook up your grounds first. Now, if we come over here and take a look. We've got quite a bit of ringing up there, but that's not important right now. Um, let's see. Measure. Channel 1. And... There we go. Duty cycle. Did I not add it? Measure. Channel 1. Duty cycle. Damn, you don't hit that button. What button do you hit? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's about two-thirds to one-third, as I had mentioned. And this is one of the circuits that you could really have some fun with. There's all sorts of things you can do here. You can play around with putting different voltages on the control voltage pin and see how that affects your circuit. But I'm going to show you my favorite trick to just simplify this a little bit more. All right, first thing we're going to do is, you know, de-energize our circuit because that's always smart. And then I'm going to disconnect the power. It's off and it's disconnected. That's the smart way to do it. So, here's what we're going to do. I think I just screwed up my camera. Hang on. Okay. We're going to remove our two timing resistors. And we are going to remove our power from pin 8. And I'm going to replace it with one of these little trimmer pots. And you're going to put it in. It doesn't really matter. Like this. So it goes between 8, 7, and 6. And then the last thing you need to do is just to get power to pin 8. Get in there. Okay. Then we'll reconnect our power. And 
and we're back in business. Now, here comes the fun part. Over there so you can see the uh, oscilloscope. I'm going to slide this over here so perhaps we can see everything all at once. And by adjusting this little trimmer pot here, I can change the mark space ratio. Of course, it's also going to change the frequency a little bit. But we can get very close to 50% on that mark space. So when I set up one of these, unless um, the circuit requirements, design requirements specifically, you know, request different value capacitors, I generally just do it like this. I find it's really easy, it's convenient, and it uses less components. And using less components is always better. Less things to go wrong, right? Right. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. And also, don't forget to check out the video at the end from our sponsor, Solder Stick. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.